is Jesse, and I am coming to you today from a great spot here in Sioux Falls, really well noted here in the city, which is called Falls Park. And we've got great waterfalls, which you can see behind me. <laughs> and this is part of the Sioux River, and uh, the water's really low, so I'm actually getting to kind of stand out towards the middle of it today, which I don't always get to do. But I love coming out here and doing meditating and just chilling out with the water a little bit and just listening to it as it as it goes downstream. And it can be really amazing. I'll start off too by wishing everybody a very happy um, autumn equinox because as I'm filming this, we are going right on top of the very point that the sun shifts from uh, Virgo into Libra. So that's a very exciting as well, a, a wonderful set of energy here. You can see we got some clouds out, so in about uh, another day or so, <laughs> these are really going to be um, roaring down here and and the rocks that I'm standing on actually are going to be completely covered. So it's really great to get out here today and, and to be able to film this for you. But this month's video, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about people and situations in our life because so many times, especially with the holidays coming on, there's a lot of things that tend to trigger us, you know, and we tend to get very reactive, we tend to be stressed, we tend to run on less sleep, things like that. And that can make us get our buttons pushed maybe a little bit easier than other times. We're moving out of that relaxed summer energy and now into the fall energy where life gets busier. Kids are going back to school. Um, you know, there's all kinds of factors going on. There's a lot of social events that have to happen right now. And as a result of that, we tend to get a little more irritated. It tends to get a little more uh, harder to find our balance, if you want to say that. And everybody tends to get a little on edge. Even if you're that person that stays calm, people around you may tend to start to trigger your buttons. So one of the things I've learned is that oftentimes what we think is happening that causes us to react in a moment is not really what's happening <laughs> in there. There's always seems like there's maybe a bigger picture to it or another piece to it that really brings out the truth. And when I talk about this, this would be like, for example, if I was in a workplace and I had a, somebody and they were coming down on me for something, you know, whatever it is, a lot of business environments, they'll micromanage you if you're in a big corporation or they, they like to tell you what you're doing wrong, but they don't tell you what you're doing right and things like that. And so a lot of people's self-esteem goes down. And of course that doesn't help any of us, right? because we know if the self-esteem goes down, you're going to get even less productive and give them more reasons <laughs> to, you know, find fault with what you're doing, so to say. So uh, this could be anything, though. This could be friends that you come across. This could be all kinds of environments. And let's say somebody's coming at you in this aggressive manner and a, a way that they're, they're it feels attacking. It may not be, it may not be meant to be. And I, I figure that most of the time it's not meant to be, but it oftentimes feels that way. And even if they're coming across that way, you want to stop for a minute and pause because it's so easy to get wrapped up in that moment that you're feeling attacked. That, and remember, those are your feelings. That's not necessarily what they're trying to create. It's just your feelings of things. And stop and observe it for a minute and say, what is really, really happening in this situation? What is really, really going on with this person? And of course, we're not going to get all the details of their life. We're not going to get all the little pieces out there of what's happened that, that created them to be in that space. But oftentimes, they're operating as a catalyst for some sort of negative energy that's needing attention or some piece of us that's needing a, attention or acknowledgement in some way. And when you really get down to it, you find out that Maybe they're trying to control. Maybe that's the bigger pattern. Maybe they're uh, feeling pressure to do things right themselves. And so they're, they're not wanting to deal with it or not able to deal with it. And they then, you know, take it out on somebody else. Or maybe they're, they're nitpicking about things. Or maybe they're um, micromanaging. Or maybe they're, you know, whatever it is. Whatever it is that's going on. And you want to stop and say, you know what? Just pretend.
project with your mind because when we talk with our mind to somebody, for example, then we're also talking to ourselves. And you want to just put out there and say, you know what? I just want to share love with you. And you want to start feeling that love. And you want to make that conscious choice in that moment to stop yourself. And it can take some practice and that's okay. But you want to stop yourself in the moment and go, hey, I'm going to choose to be different. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to choose to continue to be happy no matter what. And if you want to be that way, you can be that way. <laughs> but I want you to know that there's love for you and that it's okay if you make a mistake and it's okay if you, you know, aren't perfect every single day of the year and it's okay, you know, to have these feelings and to start projecting this towards the person and to realize that in doing this, you start changing their energy. When you say, you know what, I'm gonna be happy anyways it's gonna change their energy because they're gonna stop being in that angry space. They're gonna stop being on the attack. And sometimes it feels like people never stop being on the attack. And I realize that. But we also wanna keep that communication going when we feel it coming at us and, and just say, you know, you must be going through a lot of pain right now. You know, it must be really hard to live up to the pressures of your job. Or it must be really hard to be in this phase of life. And I might not be able to comprehend all of that, but I held love for you for the process that you're going through. And keep these things in mind, have these conversations. I kind of call them sometimes conversations with myself. Um, maybe they're conversations with God, who knows? <laughs> As Marianne Williamson would say. But they're definitely conversations. And in those conversations, start thinking of all the things that that might be there for that person. There's stress, the pressure they're under, the guidelines, the deadlines that they have to meet, um, the restrictions that they're working under, the families that they have to care and provide for, the stress and tension. I know several people around my area that are going to be getting deployed soon. And I can only imagine the volume of stress, the perfectionism. And I want to ask myself, am I needing that somewhere? Am I also being a perfectionist somewhere? Am I putting a lot of pressure on myself from somewhere that maybe I don't even realize? Because usually when it's coming through a person or a situation like that, it's something that I'm not acknowledging from within. And if I'm not acknowledging it from within, then it's gonna get my attention from without. And also I find in these situations, they're there to say, hey, are you still gonna follow your patterns of the past? Or have you gotten past the patterns of the past? <laughs> so to say. So when they come up, you also want to stop and say, okay, how have I responded to this previously? And is that the pattern I'm going to repeat? So I know since I've been here, for example, in Sioux Falls, and I was talking with a friend about this not too long ago, I said, man, what normally takes three months to start showing up someplace <laughs> or in different things is showing up in like a month, a month and a half. And I said, I know my life has been accelerating, but <laughs> this is getting kind of crazy. And I said, this is the same pattern I've been through over and over again. And I stopped, I said, no, I don't want to go through this pattern again. So what am I going to do to break this pattern? And that's exactly what I focused on. How am I going to be different? How am I going to respond differently? And I'll talk to the negativity that's there, not bargain with it, absolutely no bargaining. But I do talk with it and I say, you know what? You've got me locked into this place here. And, you know, even though I do have some choices and I do have some options, I'm not leaving your space. And if you as dark energy, if you as negative energy don't want me in your space, then it's time for me to have my life going better because, you know, otherwise I'm gonna have to be in your space because you're calling me into your space because you're being that way. <laughs> so. I'm hoping some of this is making some sense because one thing about dark energy is it will reason. It works on oftentimes a very logical manner in the sense that it doesn't want to be a detriment to itself. And so when I let it know I'm going to have to stay here until things are better in my life, therefore you need to make it better in my life so that I can get out of your space <laughs> and we can both go on to our own purposes. Uh, 
um, you know, that makes sense to it because that's what's going to make it have the best that it can have. So those are some of my thoughts of how I've been playing around a little bit, how I've been working with energy and saying, you know what, in the past, maybe I would have gotten upset over this. Maybe in the past I would have stewed. And the key is you can't just think it from the outside or you can't just say, okay, I'm not going to feel that way. But then on the inside, you're still seething and emotionally you're still churned up and feeling hurt. You have to just constant, consciously go, is this really where I'm going to put my energy? Absolutely not, because every minute I spend in this energy, I'm feeding the negativity. Every minute I spend wallowing in that pain, and it doesn't mean that we don't acknowledge it or any of that, it's about moving on, and it takes practice. So start to practice that and see how fast can I move through this, you know? Not that we ignore it, like I said, but how fast can I turn this around? How fast can I stop and say, hmm, maybe I'll just go keep on smiling. Maybe I'll still feel good from the inside. And while some people might take that smile as a threat or a competition, you have to consciously say, I'm not going to compete with you and I'm not going to engage in this. And you do that with your mind and then you feel it in your heart and, and you will feel that release because you'll say, you know what? I'm not going to engage in this competition, which is this battle of he said, she said, you know, hurt feelings, hurt emotions or any of that. Because as soon as I step into that hurt emotion space, I'm starting to engage in competition. And I'm engaging in competition for attention, for power, for control, for all kinds of things that are very subtle that we don't think about. And in letting that go, then I can just go, I'm not gonna be in that space. And I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna feel this happiness inside of me. And even if I don't smile on my face on the outside to antagonize or irritate somebody else, then I'm still smiling on the inside. And as long as I'm smiling on the inside, it's gonna get better for me. It's gonna be good. And the situations will release. I've watched it happen first time. I've implemented it firsthand, that is. And I've implemented it in my own life. So, hey, happy autumn equinox, everybody. Take care, blessings, and until next month, bright, bright blessings. And by the way, if you want to find out more of my work, more of the code interpretation work, because I've got a lot of exciting things happening with that, check out my website, find out where I am, where the events are going on. Jesse Ann Nichols George, the number one, there it is, number one.com. Take care, bye-bye.